Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to port forward a Minecraft server. Now, this is a video that I get requested a lot and I think the reason I get requested it so much is because people want me to go more in depth of the port forward process than in my other more basic server tutorials where I go through port forwarding but don't go as in depth with it. So basically, if you want to see how to start a server and like get a server up and running, you can check out the I at the top of your screen. That's going to show you exactly how to make a server like what you see on your screen right now, right? It's going to have like the run.bat file that you can click on and the, the command prompt window that opens and all this stuff. And at this point this server can be joined locally but your friends can't join this server in order to do that you need to be able to port forward that's where we are with this video and that's where we're starting it but we're gonna go through every single step of port forwarding a minecraft server for you however first and foremost I do want to mention that if you don't want to port forward at all if you just want to start a minecraft server get an IP and play the easiest way to do that and the really only way to do that is with somebody like apex minecraft hosting go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash apex to get an incredible 24 hour DDoS protected minecraft server for you and your friends all you have to do over there is get an IP address and join that IP address Address. If you can join our server, play.breakdowncraft.com, you can join an Apex server because we host our server on Apex Minecraft hosting. So again, go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, get an incredible server without having to port forward. Nevertheless, what if you do want to port forward? You want to host your computer or your server on your computer? Well, let's go ahead and do that. Now again, you should already have your server set up. If you don't, there is a link in the description down below that will take you here. And this is going to show you how to set up your server and everything like that. If you click on this, it'll take you to the page I was just on because I set up a server, this server before the video and forgot to close out of this page. But nevertheless, this walks you through every single step of doing a, and setting up your own Minecraft server. On top of that, we do have our in-depth video tutorial that has helped over 100,000 people at the time I'm making this video start a server in 114. We've helped over a million people start Minecraft servers in the past. So you can come here and go through this tutorial to start your server if you haven't already. I'm assuming you have because we're just focusing on port forwarding. Now, at this point, once you've got your server up, what we want to do is get your default gateway and your IPv4 address. So if you click the top left-hand corner of your screen or of my screen, it's in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you will have the start window. Click on that little Windows icon on the bottom left of your screen and then type in CMD. You'll then have command prompt here and then go ahead and click on that. And this should look pretty familiar. It's basically just like the thing behind us there, except it's not going to anything in it. It's because we're going to type in here IPCONFIG, IP config, all one word, exactly like we have it there, and hit enter. Now, a lot of information is going to come up that's pretty overwhelming, but we only need two numbers. We need our IPv4 address and the default gateway. Now, some of this might not be here for you. You might just have numbers. You might not have these big long strings of numbers and letters. However, if you do, like I do, that's perfectly fine. So we're going to open up a notepad document here. You could write it down on your computer or something like that, or not on your computer, on your like notepad or whatever, but we're just going to put it in notepad here. And uh, this is our IPv4 address here. We'll actually move this down here. So this is our IPv4 address. And that is going to be your 192.168.1.123. That's what it is for me. Yours is most likely completely different. And if it is, that's perfectly fine. Then you're going to need your default gateway. Now, your default gateway, there's actually two options. So there's this big long string of numbers, FE80, 9610, all that stuff. That's not the one you want. You want the one that's just numbers, which in my case is the one on the bottom. It might be on top for you, but for me, it's on the bottom. And it's just 192. Dot one six eight dot one dot one. It's that simple, that easy, and that's all you need. Now, before we get on into port forwarding, we actually need to come over to our server.properties file here in the Minecraft server. So when you double click on the server.properties file, it opens in Notepad for me. It might not for you. It might you might have to select Notepad to open it. The reason we want to open this is because there's two things we need to do. First, we need to come down here and find server IP equals. See that? Then next to the server IP equals, you want to enter your IPv4 address. In my case, 192.168.1.123, right like that. Now, above that, you need to take note of your server port. It should be 25565. If it isn't, make make that into 25565, but that's what it should be. You shouldn't have to change your server port, but it's important that you, you know, 
look at it there and make sure it is 25565. Now go ahead and click File, Save on your server.properties file, and now we need to open up our browser. In our browser, we need to open up a brand new tab, and then in that new tab, we need to take our default gateway, which in my case was 192.168.1.1, and just paste it in the URL bar where you would type in the breakdown.xyz or breakdowncraft.com or youtube.com. Enter in there your I, or your default gateway, and then hit enter. Then you'll get a page that most likely looks completely different from what you see here. You will have, though, some sort of a login box. Now, this is where I can't give too much more information other than kind of going through our already existing tutorial for this because everybody's router is different as far as what your login information is. Now, a Netgear router might have the same login information as another Netgear router, especially if it's the default information, but overall, you're gonna have to find this yourself. And we do have a resource linked in the description down below on how to find your router's password that goes through everything. And uh, basically, method number one is talk to the person who set up your internet. So go to whether it's you know your brother, your sister, your significant other, whatever it is, go talk to the person who set up your internet. And that is going to be the first step and ask them, hey, how do you log into the router in order to, you know, like get into the back end of the router and port forward and change settings and things like that. And if they don't know, then move on and check your router for a sticker. A lot of routers will actually have the default login information for the router on it. And as long as your information hasn't been changed, and most people's hasn't actually, you just take that information, type it into the router, and then you're good to go. Now, if that doesn't work, no worries. Or if it doesn't have a sticker on your router, you can try the default username and password from this website, router passwords right here. So if we click on that, as you'll be able to see, this is uh, where you can select the manufacturer of your router. Let's say you had a, I don't know, um, an access router, you can find the password and then it will give you all of the potential models and all the potential usernames and passwords for that router. So you just select your model of router and there you go. Last but not least is if you find the default password and it doesn't work, you can reset your router and try the default info. It will work at that point if you reset your router to default. And then last but not least, if it's still not working, you can contact your ISP. Some ISPs do need to do port forwarding for you or specifically need to allow you to log into your router. This is very, very rare in my experience. For example, we've had AT&T Charter and then a local ISP that I've worked with in the past and all of them just allowed you to log into your router without any problems. However, I have heard Verizon sometimes you need to enable it on your account. But nevertheless, though is your last option. Nobody wants to give that option and uh, most people don't. But nevertheless, at this point we can go ahead and now jump back over here, enter your login information and log into your router. Now unfortunately this is another example of somewhere where it's going to be completely different for you unless you have a Linksys router. And luckily for you, we have a tutorial that will help you out. We went through and created a resource of all of the top routers that are out there today. Verizon, AT&T, Cisco, Netgear, Linksys, Ace, all of these routers are covered in this video. And if your router isn't specifically covered in this video, which by the way, this is linked in the description down below, but if it, your router is not specifically covered in this video, that's perfectly fine. And the reason I say that is because a router like yours is probably featured in this video. Most routers have very similar software. You know, Cisco develops a lot of it, Netgear develops some of it, but most of the time it's very similar to other routers. So if you watch through all of this video, you'll be able to log into your router and be like, oh, this was mentioned on a Cisco router. This was mentioned on another Netgear router. Even if yours isn't in the video, you're most likely gonna be able to get help from that video. But nevertheless, for me, it is in security. Now for you, it may be in apps and gaming, it might be in advanced, it might be in security, it might be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming, it might be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be in so many different options that you know you just need to make sure you're looking for port forwarding or port forwarding slash port triggering. But overall, it should be port forwarding, it should be asking for a port, an IP address, all of that stuff. You'll see what it should be asking for here in a minute. But for me, it is in security. Then, what did I say it could be in? Apps and gaming, right? That was something I said. Well, there's apps and gaming right there. So as you can see, apps and gaming. And then from there, for me, it's in single port forwarding, right? It's security, apps and gaming, single port forwarding for me, right? Three different options I had to go through. So don't be afraid to click through your router. If you cannot break a router, you can't. You can't do anything wrong as long as you only confirm and save changes when it is port forwarding and when port forwarding is what you're doing, right? I mean, you don't have anything to worry about as long as the only changes you're saving is port forwarding. So nevertheless, once you're here, you'll see, you know, basically this application name or ID ports involved. It could be external port and internal port, port one, port two, but you'll see something along the lines of a port. 
you'll then see a protocol of some sort. It could also be called a network protocol. And then you'll see some sort of IP. You could also see a drop down box of devices connected to your network. So your computer, your Apple TV, your phone, all that stuff will be listed there. And that's okay, that's the same thing. So for me, I need to click add a new single port forward and then for application name or the ID, right? We're finally port forwarding for Minecraft. Didn't know it would take you 10 minutes, did you? But nevertheless, let's go ahead and type in Minecraft for that as our application name. That's just so we can identify. Now, the port, anything to do with Minecraft is going to be 25565 unless you changed it in your server properties file. If you changed it in your server properties file, it's going to be something different, but by default, it should be 25565. Now again, anything to do with port. So external port was 25565, internal port is 25565. It doesn't matter what word it says before or after port for you. Put 25565 there. Now for protocol, we're gonna do both, or we're gonna do TCP slash UDP, or UDP slash TCP, either one, right? But you need to make sure both protocols are selected. But Nick, what if I can't select both protocols? What do I do? It's all right, just port forward twice, right? Do this twice for each protocol. Do it once for TCP and then again for UDP. But you shouldn't need to do that. You should be able to select both. Now for device IP, this is actually going to be your IPv4 address, which I sometimes refer to as your local IP address because that is the IP address of your computer. So we're gonna take this right here, which in my case was 192.168, and then it's gonna be .1.123, right like so. And that's that, it's done. Your port forward is done. Go ahead and click save click apply and click OK. Now you will need to stop your server and start your server in order to make it work. So let's go ahead and stop our server here. It was running in the background. And then we can go ahead and double click on run.bat and then it'll start right on up, right? It's that simple, that easy. I think a lot of people make port forwarding a little more crazy and a little more difficult than it actually is. It's not too hard to do. You just need to log into your router and find port forwarding. From there, it's very, very simple. Now, at this point, your server will start right on up. You'll be good to go. And you will be able to join it via your public IP address. Now, that's not always true. I'll, I say that you can join it via your public IP address, but your friends will be able to join it via your public IP address, which you can find at whatsmyip.com, which is linked in the description of this video. But nevertheless, you can go and join via your public IP address most of the time. Sometimes you'll have to join off of your local IP address here, which is your IPv4 address. So copy and paste that into Minecraft. And if you can join off of that, you're good to go. And if your friends can join off of your public IP address, you're good to go. But what if your friends can't join off of your public IP address? Well, you need to enable it in Windows Defender, your firewall on your computer, or a firewall on your router, right? It could also be in a firewall on your router. See, I have all these different firewalls on my router. I can come in here and do that. I can add ports, right, to be okay in my router as security settings. So that is something you might need to do. And if you do need to do that, it's gonna be a bit different for every router, but just make sure you're adding a port forward or basically your port is being allowed on your router for that connection. And then the same thing for Windows Defender, your local firewall, you'll need to enable Java or Minecraft or basically Java and Minecraft to allow public connections to your computer in order to allow Minecraft servers to work. So yeah, that's pretty much that. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. We'll try our best to help you out. You can also comment on any of the articles on our website for help with more specific things. But thank you so, so much for watching this video. If it helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content and come play with us on the best Minecraft server in the multiverse, play.breakdowncraft.com. We have grief-protected survival. We have a slash shop-based economy and a player-based economy, a survival server with over 20 quests on our player-based economy survival server. And then we have custom Skyblock for you and your friends to enjoy, love. It's absolutely incredible. And anyway, absolutely love it. Play.breakdowncraft.com is the IP. My name is Nick. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content, and I am out. Peace.